Hey everybody, so welcome to this year's Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I go through and give my honest opinions about new cool tools that I have seen out there and give you my honest opinion about what I think about them. These are not sponsored or promotionals or any other thing out there. This is just me honestly reaching out and figuring out what this tool is all about and sharing my insights in case that would be interesting to you. And if you haven't seen one of these before, I'm reaching almost 50 different honest reviews at this point. So if you don't see the tool in the lineup this year, make sure you check out the playlist down below and up above to see if I have reviewed the tool that you are looking for. And today we are going to be reviewing, yeah, that one. And as with all of these videos, my honest opinion is summarized at the very end of this video. All right, so with all of that said, let's go get started. My name is Charles. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Letria. So we co-founded this company uh, with Marianne and Victor in 2019. So we've been there for around five years right now. And from day one, you know, we've been obsessed uh, with the text to knowledge pipeline. OK, so what we're dealing every day with is text. And the idea is to turn this chaos uh, into uh, knowledge. And doing so, uh, we want to turn text into knowledge graphs. So we, we offer, we embed our horizontal ontology uh, natively within the platform. So mm -hmm. uh, it's directly linked to our NLP pipeline and you can tap into 1 million words. And we have carefully designed an ontology of the word uh, with internal computational linguists, lexicographs, and we spent the last four years doing so. And we feel that, uh, and we try to enrich this uh, every day. But we are definitely not experts and domain experts on each industry. Sure. So that's where, you know, standard ontology uh, comes into hand and are perfectly interoperable with our platform. Let's say I am an organization and I have built my worldview of, of an ontology. Can that, can, how does that work with your ontology? Is it a layer above yours mm -hmm. because yours is directly tied into the NLP pipeline or how does that work? So you can export your existing ontology and re-import it within our platform and it's going to override ours, okay? So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just going to add more expertise. And sometimes if we have, you know, the same classes, uh, it's going to override on this. So mm -hmm. you can, of course, your world with, uh, will predominate on ours. But what we can offer is also the ability for you to uh, fill the gaps and enrich yours. So what we really want to help is people to enrich their existing ontologies. Mm -hmm. And that's super cool because some people, they come to us, they say, I have my existing ontology, but I'm kind of capped, you know, mm -hmm. we reached the, the, the highest level. And we're like, okay, why don't you import it into our platform? Why don't you import raw data? For example, could, could you scrape your competition, mm -hmm. blogs, mm -hmm. articles, YouTube channels, subtitles, yeah. your CMS? Why don't you put this into our engine and we can come up with suggestions, suggestions mm -hmm. of n-grams that are in your raw data, but are not in your ontology. And we can tell you it should be there. It should be there. Nice. Or it, this is a relationship and your people just have to validate and validate those suggestions. So I've, I have right now my dashboard with different projects and for this first use case, I really want to go into the ontology enrichment uh, use case. And so these ear merchants came to us and they basically gave us structure data, which was their existing uh, ontology, which is there. So they had thousands of classes with properties. Okay, so it's in French, but that's also in English, in different mm -hmm. languages. As you can see, we have a... Uh, uh, um, uh, ontology management system, which is multilingual. It's nice that you cover so many languages. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Uh, we also can import hidden or add labels. Okay, mm -hmm. we can definitely link properties to those uh, labels. Okay, so we have the ontology, uh, uh, um, uh, I would say, concepts there. Mm -hmm. But they came to us and they say, okay, we are looking as for this one. So we asked them for raw data. And so they went and they, you know, as I said, they, they fetched internally, externally, scraped the web, and they came with hundreds of thousands of pages, which is raw data. And our main 
a, a job as a NLP platform is to help them clean. So you can import either manually, but of course through API or any automated uh, pipeline, you mm -hmm. can import plenty of different formats. Oh, nice. PDFs, PNG, HTML with tags. We're going to get rid of the footnotes, the logos, the tags. Uh, and we can come up with something that's clean, that's really proper to process. Okay. So you can feel free to just dump everything. You can connect it with your third party vendors, internal knowledge base. We have connectors. And so we can, you know, pull the entire chaos raw data and <laughs> clean it and, and prepare it. Now we have both unstructured data and structured data. And the idea is to combine the two and to try, you know, to identify new suggestions. So what we launched for them is the ontology enrichment feature, which is there. Mm -hmm. And so right now this is capped uh, to 10K suggestions, but we have way more, okay? And mm -hmm. so if I click on this, I can, you know, filter my suggestions by language, for example, and let mm -hmm. me tap into the English suggestions. So these tokens are not in their ontology, mm -hmm. but we feel but they should from be. unstructured text, right? And they are, they come from different origins, okay? They come from our ontology. So this is pretty uh, interesting because we can align their ontology to ours and we can say in our world, we feel we have those tokens uh, in uh, knowledge, in our database, and we, we just give them for you and we just say, okay, they should be in this class. So okay. this is based on now our knowledge. Oh, so this is coming in from your ontology, correct? Our ontology, but it can also be generated from LLMs that you know have a broad knowledge of the world. So we have mm -hmm. plenty of ways to you know try to find new words. But these nice. words are, to be honest, not from the raw data, but we feel they should be in the, the ontology. Okay. So the, this is not just like extracting of keywords. It's actually looking at conceptual pieces that could be extracted yeah. based on what the text is. Yeah. The, as for the extraction, we go for the n-gram origin. Okay. So I changed the origin right now. Mm -hmm. And these, uh, these tokens, this one, for example, comes from the raw data. And you can see that we have more than 300 occurrences of this in the raw data. So it's ranked by number of occurrences. And we definitely uh, uh, feel that these are relatable and these should be in your ontology. So you just have nice. to accept or decline. And so, so that that one makes sense. The n-grams that you're putting things that have the most occurrence at the top because those are just raw mentions. When you had um, things coming in from the uh, ontology as recommended, but it wasn't necessarily something from the um, from the unstructured text, is there? So, if you could click on one of those to get to that uh, detail page that you were just looking at, yeah, okay. So, so this is give, yeah, this is cool. That's all this information. Yeah, so we give you the path to our ontology. We gave you why we feel. Uh, it should be uh, uh, in um, in your uh, in your ontology, and we try to align those two vision of the world and to assign them to one specific class in your ontology. Is there any kind of um, uh, confidence score or something? Um, the reason I'm asking. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wait. Uh, selected meaning ratio. Is that kind of like a yeah. confidence score? Yeah. Cool. So the reason I ask is. If I was the manager of an ontology or taxonomy team and I got 10,000 suggestions, I would be concerned because that's a whole lot. And I know you even said there's even more, which is great. However, <laughs> if you have people that need to go in and manually say yes or no to things, having a mechanism to only look at the highest precision or the highest confidence stuff first would be a, a, a way to prioritize stuff. So. In that same vein, do you have to go through every single one and manually select yes or no, uh, accept or not accept, or is there kind of a bulk acceptance yeah. that you can do too? Yeah, so you can definitely say if the the the, the confidence ratio is up to eighty percent, I can directly 
uh, you know, uh, validate them and awesome. incorporate them into my ontology. Oh, that's great. Uh, okay, cool. As for this, uh, this example, so we went really broad, you know, and we really wanted to to show also the, the power of these suggestions uh, spectrum. Mm -hmm. But definitely we can narrow it down mm -hmm. and we can re uh, come up with uh, uh, fewer origins. For example, uh, we came with uh, every origin in that uh, and methodology in that, uh, in that example. Mm -hmm. Also, um, uh, we, uh, you have the ability for your people to, you know, have this panel and, you mm -hmm. know, uh, have fewer data within it so we can for example assign one so you can category. customize it then yeah okay so cool you have different roles uh you have annotators taxonomists mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. role onto the platform and for example taxonomists they just uh, end up on this platform and they only have this panel so they are not you know distracted with other features and they mm -hmm. only have to validate and validate and for some of our uh, examples we have more than 50 percent acceptance rate from taxonomists on the suggestion. That's awesome. That I mean, that's pretty high confidence, I think, from a taxonomist. Later into the process, you, you really want to go into the text to graph, which is, of mm -hmm. course, the most rewarding part, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess, you know, the, the arrival of LLMs have, have, has also, you know, reshaped all the landscape. And yeah. a lot of people are trying, you know, to go from unstructured data mm -hmm. to uh, structured data using LLMs. Of course, leverage those LLMs because they are really good at NLP, they're really good at disambiguating, but we want to merge it into a whole pipeline that's going to uh, be production ready and that, that really uh, can solve the text to graph pipeline. So let me show you how we do this. So first, I've imported the fiber ontology. You've seen it. Okay. Then I uh, can, you know, import raw data. In that case, I don't have any raw data, but Wikipedia page. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you probably see my, my screen. I'm on the yes. Wikipedia page. So I can just save it. Uh, but I'm going to import this. And I'm just going to go through the, the cleaning pipeline. So here I have two options. I can either select the entire document or I can, you know, divide it into chunks. Mm -hmm. And that could be pretty interesting. And also, if you want to yeah. go into the RAG use case, yeah. you might yeah. want to separate it into chunks, okay? Yep. So I'm going to say it's a report, but if you say it's a conversation, because we we have a lot of use cases on speech yeah. analysis, yep. we can also restructure the conversation and uh, and, and move further into the pre-processing. -pre so here is a report. So let me click on this. Okay, that's cool. So right now I have my, okay, that's pretty cool. So I have, you know, raw data that came into something pretty clean. Uh, mm -hmm. I have, uh, I got rid of all the uh, different, you know, tags, uh, yeah. all the different footnotes. That's something that we take into account and you're not mm -hmm. going to see them into the, 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 the input there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I have both my ontology Literary ontology, which is natively uh, into our platform, mm -hmm. and my data sets. So I can go into my explore data. I'm going to uh, import one chunk from mm -hmm. these data sets. So let, let's start with this one, the second one. I'm just going to process it, wait a few seconds, and I have my knowledge graph, which would be populated into our platform. So here it is. Very cool. So as you can see, I have all the concepts. Mm -hmm. I have my attributes. Mm -hmm. I can see where it comes from. So I have two. Oh, I like that. I can see the relationships mm -hmm. between the different nodes. I can definitely filter between those nodes. So we have queries that are already preloaded within the platform. Mm -hmm. And I can just play with it and enrich it on the go. I'm assuming that you don't want to use this for graph analytics or uh, for doing any kind of graph ML. You probably want to just use this to say, yep, this makes sense that the raw data that I had is now populating the model, meaning the ontology, um, appropriately, right? Like you're not necessarily going into this to do analytics. This 
this view? So it, it really depends on the type of projects we're aiming for, okay? In that case, this is this is a pure demo. So we, we handled, mm -hmm. you know, short uh, documents sure. as yeah. an input. So it was only to prove our point to say that mm -hmm. in four clicks, I managed to, to you know, uh, uh, shortcut a project that might take 18 months if you want to handcraft it. Yes. But... <laughs> Uh, yes. So that we've worked the past five years to have this, uh, you know, uh, seamless experience. Yeah. No, I like it. So I guess the the answer then is um, if I want to do like, I don't know, a shortest path, um, you know, query, this is not the place to do it. But that's uh, to your point. Yeah. Like, that's not the purpose, though. So let's say you already have a knowledge graph, which is true. Mm -hmm. um, so you have already your graph DB provider. You have already mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. uh, ontology. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is just, we we don't want to change anything. And uh, to be honest, this is only a data visualization, but the idea yeah. is just to plug into the existing system. So yeah. what we what you're going to do is just, you're going to import your existing ontology within your platform. You're going to map your raw data, import it into our platform. You're going to tell us which connector to GraphDB and also how we can plug into your existing GraphDB. And what we're going to do is just populate the existing GraphDB from the raw data. So we mm -hmm. have just a new pipeline, mm -hmm. new, an add-on to your existing setup. And mm -hmm. of course, you can do graph analytics on top of this. Yeah. Of course, you can do natural language queries on this. If you want to go into the RAG uh, space, we are yeah. uh, uh, able to just provide you knowledge from your unstructured data. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, normally what I always suggest is when you have visuals like this, um, it's to kind of logic check to make sure that everything um, went according to plan. What if it didn't? What if, let's say, um, there's something in here where, you know, network should not be connected through heritage uh, yeah. for, for something? How would you go in to correct that? So uh, you have the ability to, uh, you know, edit patterns. Mm -hmm. Patterns are just a way, you know, to, uh, you know, um, try to override our reasoning, NLP reasoning. For example, your pattern, uh, structuration pa pattern, can be something that you, uh, so you just have to, you know, add rules and say, for example, if I see this lemma, okay, for example, company, and if it's linked, uh, with this dependency uh, relationships uh, with this other lemma, then, uh, for example, then mm -hmm. I can force the understanding and it's going to override our NLP. I think I also saw on one of your screens that there is like the full ETL pipeline, right? Like if you do have a large corpus of unstructured text, that is, is that an intent behind this? Uh, where you could have your full unstructured text go through this and one, enrich the ontology when necessary, and two, have the ontology populated into your knowledge graph through this tool? Or is this tool just doing the create the ontology, test it, make sure it works, and then your graph database and other things are going to worry about the actual ETL of the you know true production yeah. pipeline? Uh, I guess it's uh, you can do both simultaneously, but okay. I guess what's interesting is also to sequence this. For example, I, I often advise people to, you know, perform the ontology enrichment as a first step, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure that your ontology is super powered and then do the run to populate the knowledge graph. Mm -hmm. I guess in that, in that sequence, it, it's, it's pretty uh, logical, but you can mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. do both uh, in parallel. It, it, it can scale definitely based on your need. And cool. we have prepared a, um, a, an architecture uh, with our DevOps team, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, digest uh, high uh, demand and, and, and uh, have all the, the, the balancing, the load balancing mm -hmm. to just scale, uh, scale up and scale down based on our conception. Mm -hmm.